Corbin. I'm Ian. And we're here from Karate Mart. We're going to talk to you today about rebreakable boards. We've got a number of them on our site and we wanted to break it down for you. So there's a number of benefits to rebreakable boards in general. People a lot of times will use uh, wooden boards oh, right. for demonstration. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're doing it in front of people, uh, you know, wood boards are a little more dramatic. You get some splinters out of them, some nice cracking. They're good to show. A number of like dojos, like if you can't advance to the next rank until you break a board. That's right. So, you know, you want to practice and so we're breakable boards in the long run cheaper than buying a bunch of pieces of wood. Yes. You know, it's good for practice at least. They're far more consistent than wooden boards. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's just because of the nature of wood. The knotting of the wood. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can see the variations uh, just looking at the rings and the patterns in the wood. That right. Some of them are much thicker. Those are usually less dense. Right, yeah. A lot of times they'll use pine, but even if you use the same kind of wood, there's so many things that could make different boards could be different you could it could be how much precipitation there was that season it affects the density of the wood mm -hmm. other climate factors include how fertile the soil is there's the the humidity of the growing season just the general growing quality mm -hmm. of, yeah a lot of factors well were, were this trees parents divorced oh. trees from broken forests trees from yeah those are the hardest ones the softest ones are from northern california and you can't you can't control that you can't go to your board store and say i want i want a tree from a stable home because you'll sound like a crazy person not to mention the carbon footprint of shipping all those dead trees around just for children to destroy right yeah you want to use plastic so let's talk about Economy rebreakable boards. Probably the most popular one is the economy yeah. one. That's Affordable here. but effective. This is one of the economy rebreakable boards. And this mm -hmm. is one of the easier ones. You can mm -hmm. tell because it's so thin. Yeah, the easiest color is yellow, but I think Ian, because he's wearing blue, can go with blue. The hardest is black. There's also a red one. This black one for the economy ones is the equivalent of one inch pine board. Other colors are, are like thinner, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thinner boards. They're thinner. Right. You'll discover that each of these types of rebreakable boards have their own unique color scheme. You've got those in your hands right now. Why don't you show us how to put them together? The economy rebreakable boards slide together this way. And if you look at them this way, uh, they're kind of keyhole so that you just line them up, mm -hmm. slide them together. These ones are pretty easy. So if you can follow through on one of the small ones, you broke it! And it's uh, there to be rebroken again. Oh, that's right, they re-break. Go ahead and do that with the... I'm not going to be able to do that with the black one. Mm. Uh, that one right there is a confidence builder for small children. Uh, this one right here will test your actual ability to break a board. Just hold it strong, but don't, I mean, don't bounce. bounce. Just like... Hold it sturdy. Let's, let's hold it, this is sort of like framed correctly. That was really good. And a similar item that we've got is the rebreakable boards with handles. And in fact, they're identical except for the handles. Yeah, Ian thought these were a cutting board at first. All right, so can we put these together? I don't see why not. Yes, you can put them together. This is more of a proper cutting board. You don't, you don't have two handles on a cutting board. You're going to get some mayonnaise on this one too? All right. Here's another thing I like about these economy rebreakable boards is that they have a little bit of a foam pad on them. You know, because some of the other ones, they're meant to be, you know, chopped. Again, so, he's thinking about food. Chopping vegetables, chopping chopped. boards. You know, they're kind of hard, right? So if you're going to be really, really practicing, you want to practice that ball through and all that stuff, you're going to rough your knuckles up a little bit. These ones, not so much, because they have just the thinnest layer of foam on the top to keep your knuckles from just hitting that plastic again and again. Yeah, what's nice about these ones also is you'll notice that I was holding a board. You can just hang it somewhere. Yeah, these uh, these allow for zip ties or uh, Velcro straps or something if you want to strap it up to something. Ow! You're a monster. Thanks. Another rebreakable board that we have is the smart rebreakable board. Smart rebreakable boards. Hello? Hello? My reception's terrible. Why, what makes these smart, Ian? They're rubberized. Oh, rubberized. Right. So, so this is rubber right here? So this is, this is a rubberized thing up top and uh, some rubber grips in the back here as well. These ones have a different mechanism. Mm -hmm. They don't slot together this no. way. They plug in together this way. And it's uh, the length and size of these little fingers 
that determines the strength, how difficult they are to break. And they're, I mean, all of them will wear out over time. Uh, you know, they're gonna, they can only break so many times they start getting looser. You know, I mean, they're, they will wear out. Mm -hmm. uh, these ones, less so. Ow! That one's tough. Hold it harder. so hard you hit it oh okay there you got it you don't want to mess with us and if you're having a hard time breaking it together by punching it you can just pull it apart and then it's broken apart you're good black belt unlocked these next rebreakable boards are just called rebreakable boards on our website so these rebreakable boards they're similar to the smart ones they've got the slot and hinge mechanism snap together um, you've got the cushioning on the back for the guy who's holding the board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, not so much for the guy who's hitting the board. Poor woman. They're a little thicker right here. They, they have standoffs on the edges. You can stack these up and break a stack of boards like this. Oh. Right? That, they'll, that they put the proper gap in between them to allow you to actually break. Now, there's always a little trick to board breaking, right? That if you were going to break ten boards, they put spacers in between each of the ten. If you were to just line them up a flat stack, there's a lot of disappointed 10-year-olds unable to break anything. It's because of the, the physics involved. Mm -hmm. Complex. Yeah. It's because of the air pressure. Photosynthesis. It's because of the buoyancy. Because the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. But because of the surface tension. Yeah. These have a surface on them that makes them feel like wood too. The green one is if you had like a 12 inch by 12 inch board. The green one is equivalent to the black one in the economy. Oh. Or the more advanced ones, the blue, the black, the brown, it's like they're thicker wood. And then the ones that are easier, the yellow, the white, the orange, it's like a strip of wood that's that's smaller but still an inch thick. So uh, let's explain the mechanism just a little bit. Sure. sure. Or the, the hinge, right? Is it's the length of the fingers here and how deep they go into the opposite board that determine how difficult they are to break. If you've got a set of these, you can see these are kind of different uh, different lengths on these fingers here. You can mix and match them. Mm -hmm. So that this is now somewhere in between a green and a blue. Right, yeah. So the green is equivalent to a one inch board a blue is equivalent to like a one and a quarter inch board. One and a quarter. So this would be like a board that's... One and an eighth. One I know my eighth. fractions. Yes, one and an eighth. Let's go outside and just punch these with a little bit more space and a little bit more light. Okay, let's do that. All right. All right, so we got four rebreakable boards here, and Ian's gonna break all four of them with his head. Gonna do my best. All right, go for it. Okay, let me line this up. I don't know if I can do this. Maybe, maybe Big Red can help you. Come on, Big, Big Red. Red. Big Red. Come on, Big Red. <laughs> what happened? Well, that was an adventure. Yeah, and not the good kind. The scary kind. Well, I'm so glad that we have Big Red here to help us. Yes. That's one thing that happened. Yeah, I can't believe that happened to his face. There was a little bit of a, a hiccup in the filming process. We might have lost some footage. I escaped law enforcement this time, but only because I do cardio at the gym. And left us all there to get caught. Corbin, you really did a good job with those boards. Well, I, I'm really surprised. I didn't, I didn't know I had that power in me. I don't even know my own strength. They were the child side boards. Good job, Corbin. You did great. All right, so what did we learn about rebreakable boards? They are a cost-effective and environmentally friendly way, and also space-saving. One piece of plastic versus a whole forest of real wood. Well, you know, it doesn't seem like those boards were really much of a challenge for you. I'm a big guy with big guns. Mm, and, a... and a big... And a what? And a big... And a what? That's what I thought. I can't believe you just pulled out a gun and shot that rebreakable board. Big guy with big guns. Well, that's our video. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Yeah, so be sure to, to like us, share all of this with your friends, subscribe. Um, Maybe buy a rebreakable board. We'll have a link in the description. I, don't, I always point. I like to point because I feel like there's a button somewhere. Do you do that? It's rude to point. Ow! Ow! <laughs>
Oh!